That led us into looking at the technique called the, the QTVR, Quick Time Virtual Reality Sphere. So we, we will place a stills camera and shoot a, a total wraparound view uh, at very high resolution. This tripod head is basically a two-axis motion control unit. And what it does is it just spins the camera from its nodal position um, and allows us to collect an entire sphere of images that are slightly overlapping between each tile. And from that, we get a super high resolution um, sphere, and uh, we call it a bubble. So this is, we, we're shooting bubbles right now. So we can gather that background, shoot it uh, in its entirety. Uh, and because it's a still as well, we can, we can paint it up and augment it and enhance it as, as we like. And then the, the major material is, is shot against green screen, and we can build these very, you know, what would be expensive location environments around them. Uh, to get a, a, just an exquisite looking film. And there are a lot of things you can do with that type of photography. You can take this sphere and you can dial it any way you want around the actors. So if you need to make a movie with you know thousands of shots, for example, you can shoot many of these bubbles, as we call them, and you can allow the director to come in, compose, do things, and you just basically like dial the background in. We've staggered schedules so that we acquire the backgrounds ahead of time, do even the, the basic paint work and concept work on them. So those are there with us on set. We can both show actors, directors, the DOP, what the environment should look like, and we can see a live composite as we're uh, shooting the material as well. And the power of making backgrounds like that is that you can essentially go anywhere and shoot because it's a very small unit that does this. So you can get spectacular places. So we've gone to impossible places, you know, through Europe, architecturally spectacular places that are you can't close down to have cars drive through, for example. So it works very well for interiors, but it works equally well for exteriors. We were traveling all over the world, for example, for a, the Casa Cristo race. We went from Morocco to Greece, from Greece to Italy, from Italy to Austria, from Austria to Germany. It actually makes the world now accessible to you. You can go anywhere and shoot these things and shoot them en masse. So as we have cars racing through mountainsides, in this case, we're going to shoot at this uh, location, Gross Glockner. It is the most insane, most windy road uh, through the Alps. It's just laden with hairpin turns. And we're going to shoot spherically captured bubbles all throughout these roads in a way that allows us to drive anywhere, crash zoom to another, hairpin turn, see a scene take place there, crash zoom to another turn. We're going to shoot uh, the mountains in a way that allows us to make these things which we call uh, conveyor belts, which is like basically like Fred Flintstone coming home from work, like do 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 except it will be like spectacular high def <laughs> extreme photography looping, you know, so that you can race cars anywhere on these mountains for long periods of time. It is very unique on its own because we create an entirely digital environment which surrounds the actors uh, 360 degrees. And it usually starts with photography of interesting locations which very often are beautiful on their own. But then I take these locations and I, I do a lot of post-processing and conceptual work, color corrections and matte painting to get them in the fantasy realm. The movie in general is uh, meant to be very international, very multicultural, and um, we use a lot of that and we mix a, a lot of strange things together. So. When you're actually building a shot, you have this library you look through and you might say, oh, well, I like these trees in Morocco and I like this street in Stilvio in Italy and I need this curve and this rock from Santorini, Greece. So in a way, it's like sampling the world, sample cinema. Well, the environments are very rich, but they also need people to be moving around in them in order to make it feel like a populated place. Don't even think of it. The desired feel of it is something that's extremely crisp and everything has to look beautiful. There's no room for degradation of the images. They really have to look perfect. 
So that led us to investigate you know, where digital HD cameras in particular were at, and we tested a variety, and the Sony cameras that we used 